sign in delegate permissions. And you can see my outlook there, I've got the ribbon bar turned off, so I'm just going to turn it back on. And just to make sure that we are, in fact, working with Office 2010. Right then, delegates, if you go down to home. So from scratch, go to a file, account settings delegate access and anyone familiar with early, earlier versions of Outlook this will look pretty similar you can pick who you want to grant access, calendar access to off the global address list and simply add them in make sure you untick this box why it's ticked by default I do not know it's fine if you've got a secretary and you want her to get all your meeting requests but it's not fine for just about everybody else you can change, it's not very granular you can have reviewer, author an editor at this level. Remember, keep that box unticked. Unless you want your delegate to get all your meeting requests, of course. And there you'll see your delegates listed if you have multiple ones, you'll see them in the list there. And should you so wish, send somebody an email to say that you are granting them access to your calendar. If you've got the calendar view, make sure your ribbon bar is on. Share calendar, and you'll see allow recipients recipients to view your calendar. Pick the level of access that you want to grant them. Pick the user you want to grant access to, and you can send them an email. Confirm that you want to actually give them access to your calendar. So I've jumped across to that user, that Tommy Tester account. And if we look in his inbox, you'll see there's an email from me to say that I've shared my calendar with him. And if you so wish, you can click the open button above to directly open the calendar after a couple of seconds when it refreshes. There you go. That's user one now looking at my calendar. If you want to be a little bit more granular with the permissions that you are assigning, you can assign direct permissions if you right click the calendar in question, select properties and go to the permissions tab. You can add a user in here to pick somebody off the global address list, doesn't matter who it is. And add that on. And now you can pick at a bit more of a granular level exactly what you want to grant access to that user. So there's multiple sections in here, there's one for read, there's one for write. You can get to the same thing by clicking on the calendar permissions button at the top once you're in calendar view. That's identical, you'll see there's the administrator that we added in earlier. So you can be a little bit more granular or just tick edit all if you so wish. With everything turned on, you become a publishing editor anyway. Now for default permissions you can see instead of adding a user in everybody has default access and by default everybody can see your free busy time so they can invite you if you click full details reviewer on there then everybody will have access to your calendar which is probably the way in most businesses you want it set up Now, I'm logged on as user 1 here. 
if you want to open another user calendars that you have been granted access to you go to file open other users folder change the drop down to calendar and you can pick the user you want off the global address list unless you've got it cached so user 1 wants to open my calendar which has to work with and you'll see because I've, I've given him permissions he can open my calendar, he can turn it off turn it back on, he can turn it on off you can have multiple calendars open at any one time and if he wanted to remove me from that view he can just delete the calendar from there, he still has access, he still has permissions to open again if he wants but it's just not on the quick big list If you want to open somebody else's calendar and find that you don't have permissions, you can request permissions from Calendar View, go to Share Calendar, select the level of access you would like, and untick that one and tick Request Permissions to view recipient's calendar. Search for the user in question, that's me requesting access to user 1's calendar of the global address list. And that will send him an email requesting access. So what I'll do now is I'll log off and I'll switch across to user one's account and we'll see what they see after you've requested permissions. Okay, if we look at user one's inbox now, you will see there's an email from me requesting access and you can choose whether to allow or deny. If you're watching the video earlier, this will be familiar. Okay, I've now given Pete Long permission to open user one's calendar, so let's log on to Pete Long and make sure that we can open it. There's my email saying that I have been granted access. Now I can click the open this calendar button there. Or I can do go to file open or the user pick him off the list, he's right this up. And I can open his calendar directly from there. Not much in it, but I can open it. And that's us. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.petnetlive.com.